scary that it's gonna hurt. But I, 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 I see it may hurt just for a moment. So yeah, you may have to relive a few things. But on the other side of it is healing. On the other side of it is healing. It's worth it to go through the moment just one last time, just to be healed. Because Rafa is in the room. Rafa is in the room. Rafa is in the room and he's waiting. He's waiting for an invitation. I need every person in this room to stand and lift your hands in this place. And begin to go to that place of worship. Go to that place with just you and him. Forget about everybody else that's in the room. And it's just you and him right now. It's just you and Abba right now. It's just you and Rafa right now. Rafa, overshadow them. Overtake them. Wrap them in your arms. Release your love over them, O God. Begin to touch their hearts now, O God. Begin to touch every area, O God. Yes, God. We surrender, oh God. We submit to your healing, oh God. We submit to your breaking, oh God. We submit to your breaking, oh God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah, God. We submit to your breaking. We submit to your healing, oh God. We give every issue over to you, oh God. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah, God. We worship you in this moment and let you in. We worship you, oh God. Begin to worship him in this place. Good morning, Way Nation. Welcome to the people on the live stream. When Minister Shannon says something so paramount, and I don't even believe she understood what she said. She said, when you give God an invitation to come in and do the healing, you give him an invitation to come in. He doesn't just bogart his way and say, I'm going to heal you today. No. He doesn't just say, right, I'm, I'm just coming to heal you right now. No, he don't do that. You have to invite him in. So for those that are ready for the healing, there is a a river of healing that God wants to, to dip us in on this morning. Mm. So for those that are ready, if you aren't already standing, stand to your feet. And with your worship on this morning, with the fruit of your lips and you asking him on today, you inviting him in on this morning, no one else, I can't do it for you, but you asking for the healing on this morning, he will come down and begin to heal those broken spaces, those moments that you didn't forgive, and those
most traumatic events on this morning. It's just the start. Yeah. But there's a river of healing that the Lord wants to flow through this place. So all around the room, just lift up your hands and invite him in for the healing. Invite him in for the healing. God, I want to be healed. God, I receive your healing on this morning. I receive your healing on this morning. Father, I receive your I receive your healing on this morning. Jehovah Rapha, I receive your healing on this morning. I receive your healing on this morning. of individual things. everyone could rise to their feet and the reason why standing up in this moment is so important because when you stand you acknowledge to God that I'm ready for whatever you want to do so when you sit in his presence that that means that this is a move that you don't want to be a part of so he can skip over you but if this is something that you need and you want from him you have to stand to acknowledge I'm ready to receive what you have now the Lord told me that there are rivers of healing in this place and those rivers have to be released by prophetic demonstration. So as I speak and I release the rivers, they're going to flow over you. And the, the depth to how much you want to be healed is the depth to which you will receive it. So those two connect to today. So if you don't receive it or you half receive it, you'll be half healed. If you receive a part of it, you'll be only partly healed. But if you want a total and a complete healing, you need to 
receive it totally and completely. And so what does that mean? That means that as you lift your hands, you don't have to look at me. You can close your eyes. You can think about the Lord. You can look at the Lord. Or if you look at me and don't see me and you see heaven, do whatever works for you in your time of worship. But as these, as these rivers of healing are going to be released, you have to receive it. The reason why Minister Shannon, I'm going to use her as an example, why it hit for her so much is because she received the rivers of healing. She received it. She let the rivers of healing flow over her. And he began to consume her. He went from her head to her shoulders, to her chest, to her waist, to her ankles, to where she was completely submerged in the healing. And ultimately, you see what happens. So as you have your hands lifted, however your worship posture is, whether it's with your eyes closed or however you receive from the Lord, whether it's with them open, but I just want you in this moment, don't, don't think about me, don't think about where you are, don't think about the moment, just think about the healing in which you want to receive. Because he said you can't restore families until you restore people. Because we are the people that make up the family. So if you still have broken people in a family, it's still going to be a broken family. No, much how, no matter how much restoration or healing you speak over it, you have to heal the individual parts and restore the individual parts. So even right now, as our hands are lifted, God, I release those rivers of healing that are in this place that have been laying dormant and just waiting to be released. I release them over your people even now. So I thank you that even as the hands are lifted, God, let your rivers flow. Let your rivers flow. I command them to flow in this place. And I release your rivers of healing to flow over each and every person that's willing and that's submitted and that wants your healing on today, that wants the fullness of your healing. No part healing, no half healing, no semi healing, but for those who want your full healing, I say release your full river over them. Consume them and overtake uh, and submerge them with your rivers of healing even now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Even now, God, and for those who have received it, I want you to take them deeper, God. Even right now, take them deeper, Father. Take them deeper in the rivers of healing right now, Father. Take them past the shallow end. We're so used to only being in the three feet, God. But take us to six feet and even nine feet on today. We want to go into the depths of your healing. So as you take us, Father, I thank you that we receive it in fullness. We receive it in fullness. So as the word is released, if you receive that healing, I want you to go ahead and put a worship on it. I want you to go ahead and seal it with your, with your worship, whatever that looks like for you, whether that's a, a, a word to say, God, I love you. God, I thank you. God, I receive your healing. God, I feel your healing power working in me. God, I thank you that your spirit came to heal me even in this moment. And Ushikiarabasi. See, even at home, online community, we don't leave you out of this moment. So even now, I release those same rivers of healing that lay dormant in this place to go and flow into your house. Because the good thing about a river is it can flow right where you are. You don't have to be in the physical place, but rivers flow. So flow even now to every home, to every person that's watching, to everyone that has their hands lifted and their heart posture to receive your healing. I release it in their home now. I release it on their job. I release it on the people that will watch it on replay and recast God let your rivers of healing flow even in that atmosphere in Jesus name so God as we go from this moment we thank you that healing is here and as you heal the individual parts uh, family healing can begin now from this day forward and we thank you for it and we decree and declare to see it and we thank you that we will see it with our own eyes and it shall happen you're not waiting to do it but it's a now move you're doing it right now he's no longer waiting to do things he's doing things right now so if you want the healing he said lift up your hands and receive it right now you don't have to wait for it you don't have to wait for it. You don't have to tarry for it. He said, it's here right now. Receive it right now. It's an immediate thing. Just like what he did with the apostles, he broke them out suddenly. He said, it's a suddenly healing in this place. And where, as you receive it, he's going to do it right now in this moment, immediately and suddenly. Receive it with your faith, people of God. In Jesus' name, it is so. And we thank you for your word, oh God.
just really quickly just lift up worship for a few more seconds God you're doing the work in this room you're doing the work in this place and I thank you for it on this morning yeah I don't know what this song is but it's doing it right now it's allowing us to just bask in his glory with no words only the words that are that are being sung is the words that are filling up this room from you Father, I thank you for the move on this morning. You can keep that going. You can keep that going. Sometimes you don't have to speak all the time. And you just have to allow God to do the work. So when I stop speaking, I'm allowing him to do the work. I'm allowing him to deal with your hearts, deal with my heart. Sometimes I feel like I always got to talk, I got to talk, I got to talk in the, in the silence. But those silent moments are for him to do the work.
soaking moment where they just you see them, they just look like they hurt. And then you're like, God is really doing something in those moments. And he's speaking to them in those moments. And he's doing the same thing right now. And it, I smiled as I looked out. And I just saw people in worship. I just saw people with their eyes closed. And it was like glory pockets and like pockets of light was on the top of people's heads. Your glory reign over the gates of heaven. Let your glory reign. Oh, let your glory reign. Open, open. Isn't God good? Mm. That was more of a rhetorical question because I know he's good. I just wanted to know and see if you knew he was good. All right? Y'all know he's good. I know. 
he good. He know he good. The devil know he good. Like it's just he good. Like he's good. So if you guys can do me one quick favor and just give God a hand clap of praise. Just for him being worthy. Mm. Ooh, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I'm excited because we have um we got the, the, the Hancocks family today. They're going to be bringing the word on this morning. Amen. So I'm excited about that. But first, we're going to do our announcements, and um, we're going to do offering. Amen. Yeah, I get to do what I want to do. I'm a pastor. I like that. Um, I like I like that when I, I when I get to do what I want to do. So um, on this morning, I want to talk about our announcements first, okay? Um, our first announcement is today is Galentine's Day. <laughs> Amen. I'm I'm excited about that. I ain't gonna get no food, but y'all are apparently. You know, apparently it's what it's called: eat, pray, love. Uh, y'all gonna eat, y'all gonna pray, and y'all gonna love on each other. That's that's what, that's what it is. And if anybody got any talents, um, I I I I think there's gonna be an open mic night. <clears throat> I might come and just sing a little diddly do, <laughs> a little diddly do. Y'all know I might do a little diddly do on this morning. <laughs> I'm welcome to do a diddly do. Amen. Um, so I want I want all the ladies, if you aren't here, um, I want you to be on your way. If you've registered, I want you to be here. Amen. Um, bring every, not everyone, but bring bring yourselves. Amen. If you've registered, we want everyone here. Amen. Elder Beasley and Prophet Pollard has done a, a marvelous job at putting this together. So I want all, all the ladies to of the way. Amen. All the ladies of the way to come on out. In fellowship with their theme, Eat, Pray, Love. Amen. 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 Eat, Pray, Love. All right. And so on, I'm going to do it in order. All right. On Tuesday night is our Tuesday night Bible study. <laughs> Elder Blanks and uh, uh, yeah. Elder Blanks is excited because he's teaching. Amen. But Elder. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's excited about the word of God. Amen. Elder Blanks and uh, El uh, Elder Beasley, they've been doing a wonderful job um, easing us on down the road of Ezra. Amen. Y'all know I make a thing for everything. Easing on down the road of Ezra. Amen. Amen. Easing on down. Easing on down the road. Um, easing on down the road of Ezra. They've been giving us some uh, really great principles and uh, a pr a principles and methods that we can use while we're building not only our house again, but building ourselves. Amen. So if you have not gone and tuned in, I want you all to tune in on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. Amen. And I believe this week will be one of y'all raise our hands, whoever it's going to be. Elder Blanks. Amen. Elder Blanks. It'll be Elder Blanks this week um, teaching on Tuesday night for our Tuesday night Bible study. If you haven't tuned in and you need to catch up, it's on YouTube. Amen. So you can you can go you can go to YouTube. You can go on our website. You can go on, on your app on your phone. Amen. Hallelujah. You can do whatever you need to do to to look for Bible study. Amen. To look at Bible study. So I want everyone, if you haven't gone uh, and and go ease on back down the road and 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 look at and look at Ezra and then ease on up the road on Tuesday night. Amen. All righty. So that's Tuesday night. Wednesday. Wednesday, I'm excited. I'm sad that I can't attend. But Wednesday, I'm excited uh, because Wednesday, February 21st is Kaya Woman. Yes. Amen. Yes. Kaya Woman. And we have a very, 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 very special guest. I love her. She like my she like my 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 auntie. She she our auntie, she our church auntie. She a whole she the church's auntie. Um she uh, uh, Apostle Rebecca fails, amen. Uh, we'll bringing will be bringing us the word on that night and i know it's going to be so potent but it's going to be talking about loving god loving yourself and for the ladies loving your sister amen so we want all the ladies of the way to tune in every one of y'all i'm i ain't even gonna tell y'all where i'm gonna be at, but i'm I, I want everybody to tune in amen amen, amen. i want everybody to tune in apostle fails she let me tell you about this lady um she she set me on a bench and just started calling stuff out that I didn't even know I needed to be to come out of. And I just said, you know, I'm just gonna submit. Like that's how that's how great she is. Like she just you just you be crying, she be calling stuff. Wonderful deliverance minister. So y'all might go through some deliverance on that line. Amen. I ain't gonna lie to you. You you just might. You just might go through some deliverance. So 
uh, I want you to avail yourselves, avail your hearts to what she is getting ready to teach, what she's getting ready to say. It is going to be a potent word. Amen? A potent word. All right. Last but not least, Elder Beasley, this Saturday, Saturday. fourth Saturday, we bringing it back. We bringing it back. South Saturday. South Saturday. I'm I'm so excited for y'all. I'm so excited for South. Amen. South Saturday. Um, uh, okay, it was 163 West 156th Street, 156th Street, there it is, amen, amen, that's the enemy, because it works any other time, hallelujah, but 163 West 156th Street in Harvey, Illinois, um, Minister CJ, you gonna be there? I need you to bring your gun, um, I'm, it's Harvey, y'all, I don't, I don't mess with Harvey, it's safe, okay, I don't mess with Harvey, we in a good part of Harvey? I didn't know there was a good part of Harvey. Okay, it's safe. Elder Blanks is from Harvey, so I don't trust it. I don't. Uh, it's, it, okay, all right. So I, I don't need to bring my piece. I'm, okay, okay. Keep keep my blink. Okay, I get keep my blink at home. Amen, amen. But it's gonna be uh, at, at uh, 163 West 156th Street in Harvey, Illinois. Elder Be- Beasley is getting ready to bring a word. Apparently, I'm doing some worship. Amen. amen. She ain't talked to me about it, but she said I was doing worship last week, so I just I, I said I'm doing worship. Amen. Hallelujah. So we're gonna be doing worship on that night. Um, so I'm just excited. A and a B. A and a, a and a B selection. Like she said A and B is sitting down. Amen. Hallelujah. Um A and B selection. So I'm excited for that. Um, yeah, that's South Saturday. South Saturday uh, South is getting ready to blow up. Way Nation, we getting ready to blow up. Amen. Amen. Bring your guests. You got, I think everybody's supposed to bring two guests, right, South? All the South's supposed to bring two guests. If you're in South, you're supposed to bring two guests. Amen. Um, Central, if you want to come, just go ahead. It's 150, 163 West 156th Street. Amen. Harvey, Illinois. Come on out and join with us. Amen. Amen. With that being said, Way Nation, it is offering time. As you prepare yourselves for the tithe, the offering, the wonderful gifts, the expressions of love, we thank you for your faithfulness, cheerfulness, and commitment to give on this morning. Y'all, I gave on, I gave yesterday, hallelujah. I got paid on Friday. I gave yesterday. I said, here is my money. Y'all, y'all don't understand how the Lord has been blessing me with when, when you tithe. Who Jesus, Jesus, when you tithe. Man, when you tithe, that, when Minister Shannon said it best, she said, the Lord will stretch the 90. Yes, he will. And he, and he stretches the 90. And I, I, I you know, I, I believe in unexpected blessings, unexpected. Let me tell you, I, ha, I have had many unexpected blessings in the past few weeks because of tithing. And I know it's because I've tithed. I know it. There's no, no, there's no other reason other than because I've been tithing. You know, and I've been, and yeah, I've been faithful, but you're, faithful is good. But if you ain't tithing, what is, how is the Lord supposed to bless you? Like, come on. You got to give the 10%. It's only 10. You, you, think of what you can do with the rest of the 90. You know what I'm saying? Think of what you can do. And if you start paying off your gross, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. I'm, I'm, I'm getting to the point where I'm going to start tithing off my gross instead of my net. It's, it's a big difference. That's a faith move right there. That's a faith move. I'm, I'm going to start doing that soon. I'm going to start doing it soon. Um, but I, g- giving doing taking your offering I mean, and take doing your tithe and giving your tithe is something that we truly believe here at the way nation all of i can say this right now all of our all of our staff that have great jobs that have jobs that are gainfully employed are are, are, are tithers amen all of the staff that are gainfully employed are tithers amen and i love it that's what keeps this house blessed that's what keeps this house going so on this morning i want you to go ahead and and, and it, on, on the bottom of your screens or on your screens, you'll see the multiple ways to give here. Amen. You'll see that on this morning. And go ahead and give. Give, 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 give. Amen. If you have cash, um, someone, will, Elder Blanks will collect that cash. Amen. If you ha- yeah, if you have cash, Elder Blanks will collect the cash on this morning. Um, and then you can text give to the number on your screen. You can also head to www.thewaylive.tv on this morning and give otherwise you can go ahead and give on the tithely app or on our way nation app on this morning amen 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 so i want everyone to go ahead and give 
and we don't we won't take too long to give uh we won't take that uh, lightly amen hallelujah i want i want everyone to know i want everyone to know that um we are getting ready to do our first fruit our first fruit our first fruit is march 17th amen if you don't know what the first fruit is uh, we'll be doing a, a special teaching on that in a, on a in a couple of weeks on a wednesday night amen just on a wednesday night we'll be doing i'll be doing a special teaching about that amen so march 17th march 17th sunday march 17th it's the third sunday the middle of sunday of march amen so we want everyone to get there get their first fruit together the first fruit is a a a special seed that you 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 you, you give um and when you give it 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 it, it, it is that, that 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 first seed let me go back back in the old bible days what they would do is when they planted something they would tie a string around it all right and then as it grew that would be the seed that they gave to god and they said okay god here's my best here's the best seed that i'm going to give you for the year all right this is my purposeful seed for the year and i'm going to name it i won't name i'm gonna put up i'm so jesus did this is for finances for the whole 2024. This is for a new house in 2025. This is for this, you name it, and then you give it to the Lord. All right? And watch. Blessings on blessings on blessings on blessings are going to come. I have a I have an amount in my head that I'm like, all right, Lord, um, I don't know how I'm going to do that, but it's going to get done. But I'm a, I'm gonna do it, amen. And it's also a faith move. I, we talked about you know certain you know me tithing off my gross. That's a it's a faith move. And so I'm yeah I'm excited for the um, the first fruit. But there will be a teaching on it in a couple of weeks on a Wednesday night, amen. So that everyone will know, amen. He's having fun, y'all. He having more fun than I, I've had in a long time. He just just running around. I'm going to run around like that too. Amen. So let's, let me go ahead and pray over the tithe. And then we're going to um, bring up Minister Hancox um, and Minister Hancox. Amen. The husband and the wife. Amen. He's shaking his head like, nah, it ain't going to happen. Um, but we're going to bring them up. Amen. So I'll go ahead and um, pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We honor you. We give you glory. We thank you for this time of giving. Father, we thank you that as we have given God, as we've given our tithe, we've given our offering, oh God, you will rebuke the devourer on our behalf, Father. Thank you. And we come against the canker worm and the palmer worm right now in the name of Jesus that will try to eat up our seed. So, Father, we give you glory that uh, the, the blessings will come to us 30, 60, 100 fold, a thousand times greater, oh Father. In your son Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. And it is so. Amen. Amen. So, we're just going to give us just a few seconds. We're going to cut and then we're going to be right back with minister hancocks and minister hancocks amen
Hey, everybody. Hey, y'all still kind of drunk in the spirit. Is that what it is? Y'all, y'all look dry. Hey, how y'all doing? Hey, everybody, everybody, how you doing? I am Minister Shannon Hancox, and this is. Good morning, good morning. I'm Minister CJ. How y'all doing? That? <laughs> I'm trying to get up. I'll, I'll get a little bit hype in a second. It's the light. It's the light. It's the light. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little worn out. I kind of was. After I got done praying, I was like under the table over there. So, yeah, I'm trying to come back and get connected to the internet. Amen. All right, there we go. So, so our topic today, we've been uh, in the Black Series. So everybody has done an amazing job thus far. We started off with kicking it off with the men. Oh, you've been up here twice, Min uh, Minister Charles. He was up yeah, here. That don't normally happen. He was up here twice. This is his second well, I didn't time. Know if it was like a so he was up here uh, for the first twice. Sunday where uh, they addressed uh, the men, and then last week uh, we had uh, Prophet and Elder Beasley up here. They did a great job. Yeah. yeah. So now we're here, and we're going to be talking about restoring the Black family. Yeah. Wrap it up for us again. One more time. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> All right, I'm ready. I wasn't ready at first came. You guys turned me down a little bit and Shannon down too. I'm sensing like an echo there. All right, let me shake it off. We got a lot to talk about here. Got a stretch? Yeah. Okay. Yep, yep. Oh, there okay, don't hit me in the face. All right. <laughs> All right, I'm ready. I'm ready. You good now? Yeah, I'm good. Okay, so. You know, we are our apostles' children, so of course, you can't um, talk about anything until you, of course, exhaustively define it, correct? Right. So we're just going to kick it off just with a, a couple basic uh, definitions. They aren't like super robust or anything like that. But in order to talk about restoring the black family, we need to know, A, what is restoration? Two, what is family? Make mm -hmm. sense? Yeah. So we'll go ahead and jump to the first one, restoration. So like we said, simple, to bring back or to put back into a former, former or original state or to renew something. That's what we have for restoration. You want to touch yeah, touch and family? a family, a definition for a family is a unit consisting of one of two parental figures um, raising children, rather biological, through marriage, adoption, or legal placement via foster care. Um, there's also, obviously, there's different variations of what families look like to different people, right? So there's different blended families, um, sing single parent households. Uh, we talked about that as well, so I'll define that a little bit. A blended family is a family that includes children of a previous marriage or relationship or one or both parental figures and a single parent household is a household spearheaded by a parental figure, male or female, who is unmarried, widow, or divorced, or not remarried. A single parent household can be headed by the mother, father, grandparent, uncle, and or aunt. All right. So to kick it off, you know, in order to be restored, we need to take a look and take a step back and think about okay what is it what are, what are we being restored back to what was what is God's original design that uh, he created family to look like what does God want a, a fully healed a restored or you know in general what does God want the family to look like how is a guy is a family supposed to function according to God so oh, curious thing Shannon like um what what have you noticed? Uh, we we both have families and Shannon's from the west side, unfortunately. So oh I don't God. imagine. No no no, that's not unfortunate. Would, Let's not I do that. It's not finish. unfortunate. It's it, definitely not a good thing. It is. It is. Um, you married me, so it's a good thing. Yeah. It's, ah. it's not a good thing. Um, <laughs> I would imagine, um, not necessarily you being from the west side, but we come from different families. So you might have seen your family looked different than mine before we sort of blended ours together. Curious. Oh, absolutely. What were some of the trends that you seen in your family growing up? 
What did that look like? What was the characteristics of your family growing up? Characteristics. Um, well, I definitely can say I've seen, especially um, when it comes to comparing like my immediate family to other sections of the family, mm -hmm. I would say I've definitely seen the process of what it looks like when a family is deconstructed. So going from being whole, going from interacting and you know, there's no issues till something happens or, or one of the, the, your mom and auntie or somebody getting into it or, oh, yeah, yeah. or the cousins get into it for some reason or whatever. And then the family starts to kind of trickle and fall apart. And it, then people aren't as close anymore or people you, cousins who you once were close to that you're not close to anymore or you know, different circumstances that happen that has caused that division and that dissension. So I would say I've definitely seen what it looks like, uh, that process of um, a family being broken down and, and getting to that place where it needs that restoration. Yeah, I would say the same. Um, family is very, my family has been very dynamic in a lot of different ways. Uh, there, coincidentally, the church was sort of the centralized location for our, for my family, rather it be on my mom's side or our dad's on my dad's side. Um, they all came to our old church, uh, but again, the same thing. There was either a lack of communication, um, there was uh, families getting into it with each other, different arguments, people not letting go of certain issues, holding on to the past, um, and a lot of a lot of times those things happened way before we were born. So those are things that we never really knew about. Yeah. Uh, you just sort of hear about it through the grapevine. So it's never really addressed or anything like that. Um, mm -hmm. And I think, again, that brings that division amongst the family and then there's a separation. So you ever heard the term, um, it takes a village? Mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's actually interesting that we're getting into restoring the family. And I sort of, I didn't change it, but a part of me was wanting to sort of change the language from restoring the family to bringing back the village. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? Because bring I think it back the village. Bring it back the village, right? Because I think there's a there's a huge opportunity um, for the church to really support families in this day and age that allots us to come together again um, and really bring back that village so we can help each other, you know, raise that next generation. Oh man, my, there we go. All right, keep my nose going. <laughs> that was good. That was good. That was good. Yeah, definitely. Um, it definitely takes a village and it's it's it's, a, it's important even to keep that closeness because especially in, in larger families you know, all families but even with larger families that have more and more uh generations like my my mom has 17 brothers and sisters she's from yes my mom has 17 brothers and si brothers and sisters she's from mississippi um so a lot of them my mom's older my mom's in her 60s so I have a lot, a host of cousins of like different ages and there's a lot of big age gaps and things like that, but there's like multiple generations within our family. So keeping that that closeness is, is imperative so that you can uh, pass that knowledge on from generation to generation. And, and even when the restoration takes place in your family, it can go back generations, it can go forward generations. Uh, and, continue to go, you know, for the years to come. So it's just, it's just really important imperative to, to keep that family close and knit. And I think that's definitely why the enemy likes to break families up, you know, just to prevent, you know, the, the closeness, prevent the relationships, you know, and just, just so different seeds of discord amongst the generations. And uh, it literally just breaks everything apart, but we kind of get in, kind of getting ahead of ourselves a little we're bit. So moving fast. I mean, <laughs> let's I break think, back. I think as we're sort of talking about how, what we're about to break down, you guys said something, I really want to make sure we capture that. Mm -hmm. um, we're talking about restoring the family, but let's identify first, just like we had to identify and define these definitions. Let's really identify, well, how does God see family like what is his perspective on what a family looks like and i think at that point then we can continue to talk about how we're going to restore it but let's look at it through the lens of the king right so um we got the king james version here i like that version ish 
Ish. But we going to ish. I'm just, I'm just saying I like it ish. Let's throw a few different ones in there. Right, right. Uh, so we're going to start with Genesis 2 and 24. So y'all can slide with us there. Oh, God. So Love the first you. aspect of, of what we identify of how God wants families to look like is it starts from a foundation of marriage. Marriage. So in Genesis 2 and 26, <laughs> Genesis mm -hmm. 2 and 26, Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto, unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. So starting from that, that basis of marriage, and, and there should be a triad, I, I kind of call it a triad, a triad of submission. So a triad of submission means that submission to each other, but also that submission to God. So literally having God as the foundation and then submitting unto God, and then also submitting unto each other. There's a three four in, in uh, what is this Ecclesiastics? It says a three four a threefold cord is not quickly broken. It's not easily broken. So if you have that that triad, that you know that foundational uh, build with God, with your husband, with your wife, then then that sets the foundation for you know the family to be knit together. So also. Another thing we identify that God sees for the family is procreation. Okay. So after that marriage piece, that's, that's what he looks for. So in Genesis 1 and 28, um, it says, God blessed them and God said unto them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. Um, so right then and there, we can already see upon God's perspective, marriage is important and that submission is important and also like having him govern that family is important, but also replenishing replenishing the earth is important too. And I think a lot of times that goes missed in terms of the family, right? Like that's something God wants us to do. It's, it's okay. Done in the right way. Just want to put that out there. Jordan is, is agreeing. She said, yes, I'm a product. So yes, they right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, and I, uh, oh, okay, never mind. Um, the next thing that we also identified that, uh, God wants to see within the family is honor, mm -hmm. honor, Exodus 20 and 12, it says honor, respect, honor, respect, and obey and care for your father and your mother so that your days may be prolonged in the land the Lord your God has given to you. So honor it needs to be in all in all areas and aspects. Honor towards uh, husband and wife, honor towards your children, honor towards from your children to your parents. There's there was plenty of scriptures yeah, that yeah. says honor, honor your, your parents. parents. So please, kids, honor your parents. Days will be kids, short, yeah. honor your parents. There's plenty, plenty of scriptures throughout that say here's another one, Colossians three and twenty. Children, obey your parents. This is the Amplified version. I like this because it says, children, obey your parents as God's representatives in all things for this attitude of respect and obedience is well-pleasing to the Lord and will bring you God's promised blessings. Okay, so I was just going to say, I love that. <laughs> you know what? It's all right. Uh, I don't like y'all. I do not like y'all. Is this better? Is this better? All right. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I got to give me a second. This is, all this is hilarious. Um, I almost lost my train of thought for a second. So. <laughs> What I was what I was going to say is um, I like thus far God is is really mapping out what He wants the family to look like. Um, yeah, go ahead because I had some and He just threw me off. <laughs> Let me find it. I'll give it back to me. Oh man. Um, but yeah, you got it. No, not yet. Oh, I, just, okay. I know I where, I, where I stopped at, but I'm almost done. <laughs> I'm almost done. Um, also, I just wanted to kind of double back to where um, when we were talking about um, where we say a marriage, um, also in the scripture that we had here, it says two are better than one because they have a good 
reward for their labor. For if they fall, one will lift up his fellow, his fellow, but woe to him who is alone when he falls and has not another to lift him up. Again, if two lie down together, then they have warmth, but who can be warm alone? And though, and though a man may prevail against him who is alone, two will withstand with him. A threefold cord is not easily broken. So also within a family, one, when you have that triad, you have that triad with God and each other. And as a family, just as a unit overall, you're able to lift one another up, especially when you have that, that husband and wife unit. You're able to lift each other up. You're able to fight for one another. There's that uplifting, that support, that protection. And that's, those are also elements that, uh, that comes as a benefit of, of being in God's design as a fully functioning family. I like to think about um, with that, that's, that's sort of where I was going. I remember now um, the nutrition pyramid. Are you guys familiar with the nutrition pyramid? Um, so I, when we were sort of going through this and I wish I would have, I put it in here, you know, I didn't get it to, you know, the necessary people to be able to show you guys. But I thought about the nutrition pyramid with uh, God's dynamics for what the family should look like. Um, and him being at the top, obviously, right, and then husband and wife are next to each other, and it's that line there, but it's still um, under that children, right, and then under that you have other family members, but again, it just goes back to that's that's a protection almost, that's that's a shield, a that's a covering, right, like your family is your covering, your family is your protection, and when done right, the right way, I think that's even more, it adds more to what God wants to do for the family and opens up a lot of more doors for what you want to do individually and collectively. Um, so the other thing we had talked about procreation, we talked about honor. You want to get into the effect, we got to do that other part. That's like the parenting. They, they not, a, lot of them, a lot of them are parents, so they need to hear that part. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Do that one too. Do that one too. <laughs> um, so the other another aspect of what God wants families to look like is God fearing. Yeah. So when we go to Deuteronomy in chapter six, um, the first couple of verses it says, "Now this is the command, the statutes, and the judgments, precepts which the Lord your God has commanded me to teach you, so that you might do, follow, and obey them in the land which you are crossing over to possess." so that you and your son and your grandson may fear and worship the Lord your God, filled with awe and reverence and profound respect to keep all of his statutes and his commandments, which I am commanding you all the days of your life so that your days may be prolonged. And if we skip down to verse six, it says, these words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and mind. You shall teach them diligently to your children impressing God's precepts on their minds and penetrating their hearts with his truths and shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and when you get up. So he um, wants to make sure that we're, you know, also walking as a God-fearing family. That's also a scripture that says, me and my house will serve the Lord. So having that mentality, having that mindset, you know, grounding your family on the, the word, the knowledge of God, fearing and reverence of God and teaching that to your children as well. It says train, train up a child in the way they should go. So making sure that your family has that foundation. Also, just like your marriage has the foundation of God, your entire your family, family have should have that foundation of God so that you can also, you know, function and, and walk properly and correctly. Yeah. And, and the last thing too is effective parenting. This is something that God is, uh, is hyped on effective parenting. So I think we had already went through this one already. No, this, okay, it's a different one. It's a different one. Yeah, you touched it already, which is good, but also goes into, this is Colossians 3 and 21. I need to make this bigger because I can't see a lot on glasses. Um, Amplified version says, fathers do not provoke or irritate um, your children. Now this is a big one because a lot of times our past mistakes, we try, we unintentionally put them on our children. Um, and already, oh, sorry, sorry, I'm, I'm sorry. It was a ring, so I'll be thinking that um, we're clashing there. But yeah, our past mistakes, a lot of times as parents, we put them on our children unintentionally and sometimes subconsciously. And I think that's another area, like if we work 
to find different ways to doing that, we create a, a more stable connection with our children. Um, and it won't be so difficult or not as challenging, um, even helping them to see who God is through who you are adopting or becoming. Because it's an ever going, ever going process of getting closer to God. It's not just, you know, you open the door tomorrow, it's ever going. So I think as you're responding and how we respond as parents, and I ain't did it yet. I mean, I've did it once. I almost had to push C4, put him down because he irritated me. But um, I think building our families, one of the things I heard God say when I was sort of just back there, just really listening, is that there is a, a there's a patience for our young people now that as parents we need to have, but then there's also accountability that we need to hold them on um, as they're walking with him as well. I uh, just wanted to put that out there. Whoever needed it, catch it, and hold on to it. Yeah, and another aspect of effective parenting is uh, making sure that you, you sit down and go to God for the destiny of your children yeah. and because even in uh where we are Ephesians Ephesians 6 and 4 not only does it says you know fathers do not provoke your children to anger do not uh, aspirate them to the point of resentment with demands that are trivial or unreasonable or hum humiliating or abusive nor by showing favoritism or indifference to any of them but bring them up tenderly with loving kindness in discipline and instruction of the Lord. Mm. So going like that, like don't get me wrong. I mean, we all have you know our our ways of discipline. I'm not saying don't discipline your children, you know, or whatever methods you choose, you know, as long as they're correct. But also go to the father to get instruction on how to discipline your children, on how to cultivate them so that they are in alignment with their destiny course. If you go to him and know what the destiny of your child is, then you can be able to effectively raise them and make sure you're guiding them in the direction of where they're supposed to go, especially when you know what their purposes are, what they're creating the design to do in the earth, what ways are effect, what's even asking him, you can even go as far as asking him, okay, what ways will be effective to discipline my children? So that you're, you know, sometimes we do what we're taught, we do what what's happened to us. We've been beat with uh, some extension cords and switches and and remotes or whatever our parents could find, and we have that mindset to do the same with our children. But everything that we've experienced or things that our parents have done from with us may not necessarily work for our children, mm -hmm. and that's not a bad thing. It's just knowing, you know, taking out the time to figure out. What speaking of children, <laughs> taking out that time to spend with God and getting the destiny of your children so you can know how to cultivate that destiny. Hello. And then our children come in. Okay. Hello. <laughs> so being able to um, go to God and have that those side moments and, and get that uh, information and that insight about your children so you can know how to discipline them, how to uh, instruct them what things to put them in, even that will cultivate their destiny and cultivate who they are and who they are to be, things of that nature. So making sure you have that instruction from God is also uh, an element of effective parenting that, that God wants us wants to see. Literally, the, there's a, a library in heaven with books that are written of each and every one of us. So you can literally go up there, you can get your destiny, you can read your book, you can read your children's book, you can read your spouse's book. That's it's, You have access to those things. Just like a prophet usually says, it's the cheat code to life. She so being able to have those, those conversations, those intimate moments with him um, so that you can pray for your children, you can properly lift them up, you can lift up your spouse, you know, your entire family, you can get the commission for your family up there. There's unlimited access to that information that you can get. So taking out that time, you know, to spend with him to get that is um, an element that God would like to see for effective parenting. So we pretty much walk through in terms of God's perspective, what family looks like, right? So what are some things that may have Tear, that are tearing families apart today. 
opinion. Your opinion. My opinion. Hmm. Uh, one thing is definitely unhealed trauma. Okay. Unhealed trauma, uh, unforgiveness. Those, uh, like, like we even identified things. We've seen things happen in our families, whether someone got into it with one another, think words were shared, were uh, said, events happen, or whatever the case may be, and that sows the seed, and that's the catalyst of families beginning to fall apart. And a lot of times, things go unaddressed, things issues mm -hmm. go unresolved. Sometimes people are too stubborn to forgive and let go or to, you know, try to mend relationships or things like that. There's that lack of communication. Uh, so a lot of that can can hinder and be detrimental to families. So those are two things. Yeah, I think um, those are a lot of great things that are sort of tearing the families apart. I would also say culture is trying or will continues to try to tear families apart um not to sort of harp on it being black history month we are familiar with how our black heritage and um where we've come from and how black men have been pushed out of homes um on numerous different occasions and even what is needed for assistance to a single black mother like these are all different factors that needed to be considered when really thinking about well what's really pulling and tearing these families apart today. And the, the question I pose to you, Shannon, is, you know, we're in church now. We're, we're talking about restoring the family. This is a family. How does the church, where does the church fall in creating a solution for these type of issues that Black families are having? Where does the church fall? I think today was a great example of where the church falls, because our, our intercession alone was uh, cultivated the, the climate to be able to uh, deal with those areas of unforgiveness that we have personally. Because um, we can't, like we said during the, the intercession, we can't, um, we can't start that process to really heal our families or intercede for our families and lift up our families if we don't uh, deal with it within ourselves, ourselves first. Yeah. So, um having this safe space to to be able to come and pour out and worship to be able to get the deliverance and the healing that you need personally so that you can um, be in the right mindset have the right heart have the right intentions and motivations mm -hmm. so that you can go back to your family and and mend those relationships if, if there's anything on your part that you need to do you can mend those relationships and even in your personal time being able to pray and and do your your warfare on the prayer end so but having the church as that safe space to get that personal deliverance and that personal healing so it can start it start within you and then you can um allow that to be a catalyst for it to pour into your family that's uh one big role that I feel it that the church can play. Yeah, I remember um, when when Pastor Q and I were up here talking about sort of just talking about black men. One of the things that we were commenting on for the women um, is working on self, right? And so when you work on self, the man, man, the men will see the difference, and once they see the difference they'll have, it's almost like a moment, it happens so fast where they're going to either want the opinion, you know, the opinion or your attention. And you only have that one time to either say what thus saith the Lord, what he said, or do what he has asked you to do in that moment. I think this is like the same thing. So it's starting here. We went through great worship now, and then the work continues. And as we're progressing as a family um, in this house, your families outside of this house will start to see how different you are, how you handle the situations different, how you address them differently. And um, and I think you spoke to the 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 foundation is having God there first, so then you can continue to ask Him His thoughts on certain matters. We, we forgave a lot of things that our we may have been dealing with our families, but now is the time where we can go forth and say, hey, God, how do you feel about this matter? And that might be a space where our ears are a little bit more cleaner to hear him. 
um, and respond differently. And I think even in those moments, our families are seeing that. So they always just they 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 may respond differently as well. They're like, mm, you ain't you normally yell. You ain't yell this time. Sums off. Yeah, that's how I be. Like something's going on. Right. Some not right. Or I'm like, okay, what's what's going on? Okay, and it, that's how it continue to go. And the crazy thing is, God's doing the work at that moment too. At that moment, He's working, and all you've done was continue to edify and get what you need so that he can continue to do what he needs in them. So I think that's really cool. So being a, a lifestyle example. Yeah, or, yeah, I think that's being how. Being an example, being that light, uh, allowing the change, allowing, submitting to him, working on you, allows you to uh, make that change, and that change is typically noticeable to other people. And restoring, when we talk about trying to restore the the black family, yeah, I definitely would say the church plays a role when we do stuff like we did today, because it it was pure. Um, and and shout out to Pastor Q, but he didn't want to move until God was like, okay, now you can continue on, because there were everybody was still just hearing and 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 getting forgiveness and in that space. That's what we need to continue to do. I think that's one of the beauties of this house is. Um, sorry, that's one of the beauties of this house is that we give that space collectively and individually. Um, and that's how, as a family in this house, we'll continue to restore black families as they come in, because they're going to come in with issues. They're going to come in um, with different problems, but we have to make sure that we continue to give them a space to get their own deliverance first and walk them through those things. And then they'll begin to bring their families in um, collectively. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so another thing, I kind of looked up the statistics, and in, I don't know if you if this was something you knew, but in the United States, 40 to 50% of marriages end in divorce. 40 to 50%. That is a significant number. So I, divorce is uh, another thing that I think breaks families apart, and not all you know, not all families start off, you know, by marriage or anything like that, but divorce or sep I would even say just separation in general of the parents, whether they, you know, married or not. But separation, divorce, those, that's another factor that uh, causes families to tear apart. Well, yeah, I, I agree. I think also acknowledging, <laughs> gotta be careful the way I say this, um, but God sees family to look a certain way, right? And so if, oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> Tell him again. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah one so, job. Right, one job. Uh, so <laughs> God sees family to look a certain way. And I think when it defers from the original plan, um, it's almost like that family stepped out of, right? Thank you, that covering. And so the problem starts there. You, we have to be in line with what he's already defined as a family. Um, when we start there, we, we're already covered for what things to potentially come. Um, another interesting fact that I found um, in 2022, there were about one point, I'm trying not to look and look at y'all, but I don't remember off the top of my head. It was about 1.21 million black families um, with a single father li not living in the home. Whoa, 1.21 million? Like in the United States. So that's terrible, right? Like, like we're being pushed out of the home and the problem is men are needed and i think that's another thing that we don't often say like men you are needed in the home the woman is needed in the home the man is needed in the home and that is what god's original design looks like so when we fall from that we're already fishing trying to put stuff together that's difficult for us already and it's even more disturbing because it said that was an increase from 1990. Oh, so yeah. In 1990, there was 472,000 black families 
with a single father. But from 1990 to 2022, 2022. it went from 472,000 to 1.2 million. That is disturbing. Yeah, I mean, but what? Do, Why what do is you that think st- that is? Um, <laughs> you know what? Hold on. Um, my opinion is, it's um sort of twofold i think that we there is a almost a lack of men who really are hungry to be in the home um but then there's also this sort of fantasy of what life looks like outside of the home you know you know the enemy the enemy has really shown a lot of men a lifestyle um and it, that without a family this is what you're doing all the time and it's almost selfish selfish in a sense and a lot of people don't like that i mean considering us being taken out in other ways i think holding men accountable in that regards i can i don't mind doing that because i think that's important as well there's a lot of things that we can solution we can work to figure out solutions on but if we don't hold each male accountable and say hey man like you really do you want to be in the home do you want to be taking care of your child and if you don't there are issues there that you need to go to god and figure out first um so that's part of what i think and again and again it sort of goes back to what the world is pushing the world is pushing men out and i think it's sort of been doing somewhat of an okay job pushing men out from again making them see things that they want um a certain lifestyle the continued brutalities um different things that we've experienced throughout history is just crazy the enemy understands how powerful the black family is um and has continued to create yeah but fathers and the family as a whole too right like but one of the components of the of the block right like he knows that if this family is super powerful but if i take this block off it's gonna it's not gonna stand as firm as it's supposed to mm-hmm. and that's what's been like one of the issues And then one of the the last one of the last points we have on here uh, for things that tear families apart is continued destruction of the family through generational curses, ooh, not yeah. broken through prayer. Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So things that have been passed on, it's like like you said, different issues or things that may have even started, like you said, before we were even born. That's kind of just kind of carried through as as continued cycles and dysfunctions. And that's been passed down through different generations and generations and again it keeps going unaddressed keeps going um unbroken and, and it's just continues to run ramp, run rampage in our families but fortunately you know all of us sitting here we are representatives of our families and, and we have that ability to begin to break curses to be to pray for our families to lift them up to, to go back through those things and, and and even go to the course of heaven and and get those things broken. So that's even, oh, we should have put that on here as a tool. We're going to add that to the list. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The practical yeah, tools, uh, yeah. for sure. I did, I did add it. Oh, you did? Yeah, I did add it. I did add that on. Nice. I was thinking ahead of the game. I got you. All right. Boom, there we go. All right, we're back. <laughs> we're back. But yeah, and I'm going through and, and breaking those generational curses and, and breaking those cycles and breaking those dysfunctions so they don't continue to go on through future generations of your family. So so ending those things like now. We have as we, we come, we are representative representatives of our family. So we have that ability and that power to end those things now. So when we talk about let's give them a couple of practical components of we sort of started already with uh, we, y'all were already in our message um through the intercession so 
But yeah, let's touch on some practical components where we can start doing now. When we leave here, that's going to really help us to restore our own families individually because we're already starting to do the work collectively together when we have intercession like we had today. Um, so practical steps. First one we have is a lot of, especially black families, a lot of black families just, I don't understand why, but we, I we do get scared of that word therapy. Yeah. A lot of people think going to talk to somebody, you know, it means you crazy or or you weak or anything of that nature, but we have to dispel those those myths, those mindsets. Therapy is is really important. Mental and emotional health is 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 very important within the black family. We have to be able to address those things. So taking one practical easy step you can is is going to therapy, being able to to speak on some things, being able to go back and walk through some traumas and some issues, talking about it um, with a licensed professional, it will cause way more benefit than you can ever imagine. It's not a bad thing. It doesn't mean you're weak. It doesn't mean um, anything's wrong with you or anything of that nature. So we definitely have to dispel that mindset. We got to also dispel what happens in this house stays in this house. That's what yes. God just told me. Yep. We got to dispel that because... We don't give the church access more. Okay, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. No, he's talking to me. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. I saw a mirror right there. Um, um, okay, okay. I hold myself accountable. Okay. Yeah, we actually have a goal. We're supposed to. I know. Yeah, that's what I said. That's why I, that's why I, said so, I hold myself yeah. accountable. We got to get on it. Um, but yeah, no, we do have to. We do have to stop that notion um, in the black family, um, because we don't give the church access, but then I'm just hearing too, we don't give him access. Mm -hmm. You know, we keep it, we keep it bottled up. Only those three people know about it, what's going on. But what ends up happening is those three people aren't the prayers in the family. Those three people don't have, or maybe not on the walk, you might be the furthest in the walk right so like you know and yeah. so right you know what i'm saying so like that's 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 a problem um that we have to sort of stop um that's going to help us to continue to restore families um being open and open to a lot the church of space to support our families and this starts with being able to support you individually uh so i'll give an example of this we did the soul assessments. Um, the staff had to do the soul assessments, so I uh, I did mass. Um, I did mass, and before you know, I talked to Pastor Corey, and um, y'all supposed to do soul. Yeah, I supposed to do y'all too. I did mass. Okay, I, I, hey, I did mass. I talked to uh, Pastor Corey. Like, hey man, I just want to make sure you're good. Just you know, make sure this space you open up and. Um, Oh, the Beasley even said too, right? Like you have to want the support. And I think that's why therapy can be a great thing when you want it. A lot of times we don't want the help. We don't want the help. So there was some stuff that I originally came in, in my mind. I'm like, I'm not talking about that. You literally only going to get, I think I said it too. I'm like, I'm not talking about that. Like you're only going to get about like 10%. Um, but throughout the conversation and I think I had to realize like this one is a safe space uh but then to also I only get as much healing as I want and if you don't like sitting in shh right because it stank you gotta move <laughs> you know what I'm saying but if you continue to sit there then you stink and I don't want to stink and so um I, I gave more and actually got a lot more in return, um, especially with some of the things that was really like bothering me or I was dealing with um, in my quiet time that I may never say nothing about, probably never know if you look at me, you know? So that's why I think that it starts with one, not just no longer being able to say, well, what this happened, it stays within this confined circle. No, we need to go to professionals or you need to go to trusted individuals in the house that 
can pray for you in a way that you may not be able to pray for yourself in the moment dealing with whatever you're dealing with. That's good. So having that that vulnerability. Is yeah, good. vulnerability is key. So not only you know definitely having that vulnerability, um, being open and willing, and also wanting to receive the help. Even Elder Blank said that this morning. You have to want and uh, want to receive the healing. Yeah. You know, because you're not gonna go anywhere if you're just going. You know, to sit down and. You're not trying to talk. You're trying. You're closed off in certain areas. You're you're not gonna get any healing in that regard. Yeah, and, and forgiveness. Um, that's another thing that sort of plagues our families, the black family. We don't know how to forgive. Um, we hold on the trauma like and put it on our backs like it's a book bag. We walk around with it, and I think we had a man. You know what's crazy? Um, when we were putting this together. I kept seeing a lot of Pastor Corey's old sermons. And I remember one time he had had like bags or it was boxes and people were like, yeah, remember they was walking past and being like really fashionable with it. And I just, I wanted to put it in there, but it, it was unnecessary to put it in there. But I'm just thinking about it now. Like that's really what holds our families down. Like we might have cousins. I'm sure you guys may have cousins, uncles, sisters, nephews, whatever, who may have dealt with something and they wear it and they now you know they're dealing with some but they look good wearing it in a sense like they put it on in the morning after they brush their teeth type of thing so when it comes to family events you already can see you already know but nobody's dealing with it nobody is praying about it nobody's talking about it or nothing like that um so forgiveness is a, a com important component and it was said today like i said y'all y'all was all through our message mm -hmm. forgiveness is not for them it's for you mm -hmm. Um, that's another huge, huge practical step that is going to give us a really a, a better, a better place in restoring our families individually and collectively. Yeah, definitely forgiveness, uh, literally bitterness. Like as as I was praying it this morning, for, uh, unforgiveness and bitterness is is literally like a cancer to your soul. It it, it affects how you think, how you see the world. It affects your perception, how you how you perceive relationships, people. Uh, it can hinder you from from being able to effectively engage people and have healthy relationships. It, it affects your attitude, your mood, how you think. It literally take it literally takes over your entire body and literally just just switches your personality, switches uh, your identity. We we put on a lot of times we the the different traumas and the things that we go through. We, we put on us and, it, and we hold on to it and it, it becomes an aspect of our identity that God didn't create us to have. You know, we, we're, we, we have a certain mindset about things because of our past experience and what we went through because, because we haven't forgiven. Or a lot of people will say, I forgave, but I forgive, but I'm not going to forget. Did you yeah. really forgive? No, <laughs> if if, you're, no, if you have to say that, then that means you, I don't think you forgave in the first place. <laughs> I mean, when, literally when you c come to a true place of forgiveness, and there's five areas of forgiveness. And so sometimes we may forgive out of one of the aspects and not the other five. ones. There are five levels of forgiveness. Uh, forgiving the person, so the person who did whatever to you, the person, yes. the event, that happened, you have to forgive the actual event. So I you may I may forgive CJ for uh I don't know. <laughs> I'm trying to think of a, a scenario, not a real one, but you know, I can forgive CJ for stepping on right. I that can forgive CJ weird. for uh <laughs> he may have stepped on my toe. I can forgive him, but I haven't forgiven the the actual fact that he stepped on my toe and how bad it hurt and, and now I can't walk. And, and right, messed up my shoes. Now I got this black spot on my white shoes, and and uh, and I can't wear the shoes anymore. You see how my whole demeanor changed because I was still harp harpered on the event, even though I said I forgave him. Mm -hmm. So you have to forgive the person. You have to forgive the event. You have to forgive the people involved with the situation. So there may have been some other people who may have co-signed what happened or may have also been a part of the, the situation or whatever happened, you have to forgive them too. Because that, that, that leaves a connection there to still be tethered to that event. Um, so you're the person, the event, people involved. You have to forgive yourself. 
So any roles that you play in the actions, you have to forgive yourself and you have to forgive God. A lot of, and that's that's usually a hard space too. Mm-hmm. Oh, that, that, uh, that just hit me. That, it, that sometimes that's also a hard space too, because a lot of a lot of things people will say is, "Why did God let this happen?" or "God, where were you in this?" or uh, uh, anything along those lines. But going back in and forgiving God is also an element. So you have to go through all five of those events in order to come to a true place of forgiveness. No, you you were on it. I was thinking about it. Yeah, holistic forgiveness. I like that word. Holistic forgiveness. Yeah, Yeah, so we... I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. How... I think this is good. Holistic forgiveness. I think this is good. We know the stages of forgiveness that we have to walk through collectively right or but some of our family's members may not also be aware of those stages how do we move past or there may be uh uh how do we move past or help them to get to the same level that we are um they may be individuals who don't necessarily want to go to church so or don't go to church so they don't get this same information or well, there may be somebody, maybe somebody who's not as interested in hearing, hey, this is what I learned at church. So how do we get them this same information so they can get that same healing that we've gotten? Where do we go from there? As far as like with forgiveness? Mm-hmm. Um, well, one, now that we're edu- we are educated, you know, we know, we now know those five areas. You kind of just have to meet people where they are. You know, some, everybody is not always churchy or everybody, you know, may, uh, may be unchurched or, you know, it just may not receive the same way. So you just have to meet people where they are and um, ex- you can explain, you know, you can still explain there's that there's those five different levels and even, you know, let them know that forgiveness a lot of people don't understand that forgiveness is for you like a lot of people i i didn't even really understand that at first you know i'm thinking that you know if i stay mad you know it's gonna affect them in some kind of way i don't know but really not forgiving someone is is really only affecting you that person is still going about their everyday lives unaffected they might not even be thinking about you anymore thinking about the situation they are fine they are living life but you are still stuck and tethered to those moments. You are still affected in your attitude or every time that person's name is brought up, you your whole demeanor changes or, and, and they literally still hold a power over you. So forgiveness takes away that power that they have over you or that event has over you. So really getting people to understand it from that perspective that forgiveness is for you. Forgiveness is so so that you take the power back over the situation, so that you're not um, held back or stagnant to whatever that was, and you can get that that level of freedom for you. I think people would uh, be more open to the idea of forgiveness. I like that. I like that. Let me ask you a question. Then we had spoke about culture a little bit. I'm curious. Have you seen any television shows or anything like that that sort of display the idea or, or, or the perspective that God sort of wants the family to look like? Have you ever saw it in like a TV show or, or anything like that? Well, if we're going to go there, um, we do. It's, it's interesting to see how there's kind of been a shift, like going back to like the 90s sitcoms where we had like, the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, the Cosby Show, you know, we have have those shows, the Bernie Mac Show, even, you know, where it shows a a functioning family unit, and it's it's interesting to see how we kind of went from that to even shows that more so just focus on like single parent households, like the Parkers, One on One, um, even what is that show, the Marlon Wayne? Is that the Marlon Wayne Show, where it's the divorced couple? Yeah, but they still co-parent so it's it's we don't really see a lot of shows nowadays that uh still portray that that successful functional black family anymore 
So we kind of saw a, a shift from, you know, it being a, a fully functioning family, a two-parent household, successful to single-parent household, whether it's father or mother or or even adopted children or, you know, children from uh, other uh, areas of the family being brought into the household. So we, we don't see that example in the media anymore. I think this is because, too, like, more people it's what's relatable um some way along the lines the 90 sitcoms are a lot of people it's not relatable to them no more like that's yeah. not the norm i've worked with a lot of students and it's very rare to find that type of dynamic household you know um, yeah especially and, considering that statistic you just threw yeah, in there 1.2 uh, million families without yeah, a, a, a black man in the house it's it's the it's a huge problem in the community as well. I think it plays a huge role in how why our students or why why black young men and young women are going in different directions. Um, and there's a way that we need to figure out. There's a way to bring them back. And it's not always, hey, your mama need to go get a man and you know bring a man in the house. I think that's a little bit far fetched. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question then is. With that sort of being far fetched, how do we approach a, a different solution, or what solutions do you think may be more um, implemented in terms of finding new ways to bring some of those young people back from those broken homes? Hmm. Definitely, I think I think that's where the the power of like therapy and deal and working on self comes in and working on whatever um, you know talking about those issues talking about you know how how you feel about yeah. where wh about how you see your family and and the things that have happened and being able to one get them to express it get them to acknowledge it and then work towards healing from it work towards healing from it and then hopefully that can even open the door to, you know, reel, reel them back in and even real restore those relationships that may have been broken. So a lot of, you can, a lot of, I, from what I just saw, there's a lot of people that even lives in the household with family members, like you can be in the same room, but the, the relationship is broken. You don't really interact with one another, things like that, but beginning to, actually address sit the family down and address those issues you know have them talk about what's going on or where did the the conflict start where did the relationship fall from being able to go back and identify those things and and work towards building the relationship back but there has to be a willingness on on both ends but even i would even venture to say that even if there is a willingness for the other party still do it for yourself yeah yeah. So what about our, this house? Um, I guess it's too sort of later, but let's think about our house. And I think this is where I would like to see y'all sort of participate. If you want to, I ain't going to force it. Um, we're, we're breaking down and really we are, the goal is to restore black families. Um, but how do we begin to restore this house? How do we restore our family here so that when we have members here, um, they feel welcome. Um, we don't want our members leaving or, or, or stepping away. You wanted to, you, you, you want to pass over the mic? You, you, yes, I want you to participate. Well, hey y'all. Hey. hey. I was just gonna say that um, I've learned this from experience, listening, listening like if you know that you haven't seen a person in a while you know that a person is going through something and they might not have told you everything or they might have like told you briefly like yeah i'm okay or etc but hasn't like fully explained the situation it's okay to go back to that person and reach out and just listen like some people just need to sit while the other person talks um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> And I got that from my kids, actually. Um, 
this was a good conversation that you guys well teaching conversation you guys do such a great job um i was asked a question by holy spirit um it's kind of funny because he was like what made you a better person i'm like my kids you know i changed everything from them like for them and for them like for myself and for them um and it came by listening to them like listening to the things that they would say out their mouth or you know when we have like lash out monday i let them express their week in how school went or any situations that they have going on that they feel comfortable with telling me because they open up to me and they tell me things i never want them to hide anything but if we give people the advantage to speak up and let them have a voice then that would keep us connected that would keep us stronger if we listen if we listen that's just one of them i like that i like that point i think that's really good to have family members you you want to say something i didn't write it down um i didn't write the question down i wasn't expecting to say it twice um pretty much what can we do is in this house right we to continue to restore our family this is a family so how do we restore our family just in this house alone that as in amongst each other amongst each other members the members you guys just stand over <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. Um, this is just kind of twofold, but I'll say this first part first. Specifically for this house, I think what we can do and what we already do is love. Because a lot of the times people that will come in this house will come in from broken families and they don't have a, what's the word I'm looking for? They don't have a cookie cutter you know, family structure. So they may not have grew up in a two parent household, or maybe they were raised by their aunt or their grandmother, or maybe they had a blended family. Maybe their parents were divorced and they just had to be out on their own. So a lot of the times they come in, they don't have that family structure, but as we love on them and educate them and show them like you guys did today of how a family looks in God's eyes of, okay, it starts with marriage, then procreation, then this, then I think, as they get engrafted into this family, now they will go out and have a family of their own. And it, it helps to add to this family because now there's been healing that's been done on them because of the love that they've received from, from uh, people who are, who are whole and who are working towards wholeness versus like, if I come from a broken family, but nobody ever loves on me and makes me whole and I just stay in that brokenness, they're going to continue to now they're going to go make another broken family of their own. So yep. it's never going to the cycle won't stop. Cycle won't so stop. the love is what will stop the cycle. Um, so that's what I would say. I love it. I love it. Anybody else want to? Oh. I'm actually glad you said that because that uh, made me go back to the, the bedrocks that we have, the nine bedrocks of this house, which one of them is we are warm, welcoming and authentic. The second one is we are loving, kind, and compassionate. Um, so making sure we go back to those bedrocks. Number three, we are honoring, re honoring and respectful. Um, and even going down, there's uh, one I'm looking for, uh, relational and familial. So like you said, there's some people that have that brokenness family at home, you know, we can come here and feel like a family. Like that's the culture of this house that we, uh, strive to create just based off those nine bedrocks. So even putting the emphasis on those and and even really pushing those forth in prayer specifically for this house to make sure that we're operating operating within that. So when other people and new people come in, they'll experience that. Hello, A Nation. Hey. Um, just to piggyback off of what um, the other senior leader said said and my sister in Christ um, I believe the fruits of God's spirit is always and forever needed because it has the grace and the divine uh, gifting to carry us to those unknown spaces and areas of our life where, we're, where we or the environment that we in is still undone or still in a process of being you know uh, pruned shall I say? Because when I think about the garden of the heart, 
and the way we keep it going, um, keep it up is if we go in there and do pruning. We pull up some weeds that may have grown there and we gotta do work in the garden in order for it to be upkept or upheld in a way that it will continue to produce. So us as a family, um, I think that it's important for us to always keep those reminders of where we come from so that everyone that walks through the door, we can kind of meet them where they are. Because like you said, this is our extended family. Usually if we're running away from our own family, we're running to another place. And if they make it to this place, then uh, yeah, our bedrock should be with able to withstand the people that's coming through the door. Mm -hmm. So just to piggyback off what you guys said, I think love, covers a multitude of sins and also put you in a place of divine humility and also put you also allows you to be a partaker of the other fruits of God's spirit that helps works the flesh into a place of obedience. Amen. <laughs> okay. Um hey everybody. <laughs> Uh, the question on the floor at this time is, how do we keep this family, how do we get this family back after we know everything about this house? How do we get them back? How do you open yourself up or become vulnerable when you already know everything about the house? your family, I call us, we're a bunch of uh, misfits that God has uh, taken the foolish things of this world to confound the wise. He'll take the low thing and make it powerful. And that's what this group is. That's what we are. Uh, we've all come from broken places and we've all come from hurt and trauma the question being how do we continue to be a safe space and i agree with minister shannon this morning that hurt people will continue to hurt people it doesn't matter if you name the name of Jesus or not. If you have not addressed those hurt places, those trauma, those triggers, uh, uh, those uh, injectionable feelings, those emotions, we need the therapy first. We need the therapy first. We need to be healed first so that that healing that we have here you go, Minister Shannon, can metastasize <laughs> into our own families, into our own churches, into our own lives. There. I see what you did there. <laughs> Thank you. Yes, I, speaking on families, I was listening to, uh, I forgot her name, Jane Minister. Jane. Yeah, when she was talking about you stepped on my toe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my thing is uh, forgiveness. You know, we have a lot of unforgiveness in the church, even at home, you know, in the family. So, but a lot of people don't know how to forgive. You know, well, how do you forgive, you know? But my thing is, I think understanding uh, plays a huge part mm -hmm. in forgiveness because like he was saying, you gave the parable about stepping on your toe. Say like if you stepped on my toe, I may be upset, but I don't understand that you didn't know that you stepped on my toe. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So if I don't say nothing, the Bible says, if you have an alt with your brother, go to him. Yeah. So if I go to you and I say, oh, you know, minister, so and so, you stepped on my toe and you really hurt, you know, and you said, I didn't know I stepped on your toe. I'm so sorry. I was trying to do this. And, and you know, I got distracted. And then I said, but once I get understanding, oh, oh, 
oh, and then I say, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. Then I can forgive you. Yeah. You know, I can forget about it. But if I never say nothing and we never get understanding, then unforgiveness is just when all the time you didn't even know you stepped on here. I am holding a grudge mm -hmm. and I can't forgive you because I think you knew that you stepped on my toe, but you just didn't <laughs> too honorary to say, I'm sorry, or please, you know, you, create you know what I'm saying? But once scenario. you get understanding, so it's important. I feel like it's important for us to go to one another, you know, especially in the home, because it begins at home, then spread abroad, you know, spread abroad. But if we can go to one another, instead of just being mad and holding a grudge, you know, mm -hmm. the world will be a better place. Absolutely. You get understanding. That's why the Bible says, with all you'll get to get understanding. understanding. So I think that's key. Amen. Yeah, that's great. Because that'll keep you stuck in offense as well. If you don't be able to acknowledge things and deal with the arts and deal with the issues that that prevents offense to, from setting up, set, you know, taking root within you. Hello. Hey. This will um, be our last question. But go ahead. Um, one of the things is like, I feel it's staying out of the the seat of the judgment. You know, when you feel like your family and you know someone, you be like, oh, like you do with your family. Oh, that's crazy. That's crazy, Uncle Charles. Leave him alone. You know what I'm saying? You feel like you know someone. You don't give them the opportunity to be different, or you know their character, or you, you know you feel like you know them, or that's where you used to be, so you pass judgment on that. I feel like if we keep that out, you know, and give love or give forgiveness or be a shoulder or somebody to listen to instead of be like oh i know your situation and i'm gonna pass judgment on it you know that's where it can be you know that line of differ or when somebody comes in and you, you see the way they dress or something like that and you judge them off of that that can turn them off from wanting to speak to you come to you and build something but not just you the people around them you know what i'm saying so i feel like one of the things that go along with everybody is keeping judgment out of it to be able to come to them humbly and be like, okay, I understand you. I'm going to listen to what you have to say. You know? Yeah, I think that's the one, one of the big things I love about this house where this house has the culture of being accepting to everybody, having that love. And, and this house is specifically called to, you know, those people who are usually outcasted from other places or, um, who are the unchurched and things like that. So this house, is, our culture is to, to be welcoming to people like that, to, to not have judgment, to be a safe space. And Bible also says he is without, he, he who is without sin cast the first stone. So we, we have no place to judge anyone. And you know, we've all been in our situations as well. So everyone has a past. We've all been there, you know, and we're, because we've, come through our places of forgiveness and come through our places of healing you know we're we're able to reach out and and help someone else walk through the same thing that that we've seen them go through that we've been through ourselves so we that's the that's that uh yeah mentoring that's one of our five m's so definitely the this house has that culture with our five m's with our nine bad rocks um to make sure that we cultivate a family atmosphere so we can restore those who who come here to our house and they can join our family as well uh yeah so with that we are out of time uh we thank you i challenge everybody everything that you said uh put it into practice with your own families and watch what god does so Oh, okay. Clap it up for us. Uh, but yeah, I just wanted to recap, just just reiterate some of the, the little quick practical steps that we did talk about. One being therapy, two being forgiveness. Um, we didn't get to dive into this one, but the third one was prayer, and I'm pretty sure you can see. Do, do, might talk to it a little bit but prayer was definitely another one and as you probably could see this morning was definitely an example of, of prayer being a tool and a practical step um, but again the focus has to be on dealing with you first because if you don't deal with yourself first you can't even pray from that effective place you can't pray with that level of sincerity and, and being genuine and authentic um, to be able to for your prayers to be effective um, 
yeah all right all right so one more time let's clap it up for our guy being awesome all right so you guys look really comfortable if you guys can stand up i'm gonna pray us out since we did offering already all right so father we thank you for another service we thank you god that um, for intimate time with you we thank you for our families individually and collectively we thank you god that we were able to get tools strategies and even blueprints on how we can work together um, and individually to restore our families and we continue to ask that you continue to bless us as we move forth we thank you for traveling grace for those who have came here and where we're going we love you we honor you we thank you again have a great day god amen and it is so you are dismissed. Y'all have a good one. We love you, Way Nation.